There's a single staggering fact about the Interstellar Visitor 3 I Atlas that NASA's entire press briefing deliberately avoided. And that omission might be the most important part of the entire story. I scrutinized NASA's long-awaited reveal of the 3 I Atlas data. They presented new SOO sensor readings, faint Lucy instrument signatures, a hydrogen halo from Amivan, and the now familiar Hubble teardrop image. But across the entire presentation, one critical subject was never brought up. They didn't talk about its scale, not a single mention. You see, for an interstellar object, size is the cornerstone of everything. It dictates the rate of outgassing, the density of the core, the object's brightness, its rotation, its acceleration patterns, and its survival when nearing a star. Every major calculation depends on it. Yet, NASA remained completely silent on this foundational point. But the data from Webb's infrared limits, the Mevivian halo, and brightness profiles point to one inescapable conclusion. 3i at last is colossal. A cautious analysis suggests a diameter of 5 kilometers. It might even be bigger. This isn't a small discrepancy. It's a profound anomaly. To grasp how shocking this is, look at the others. Oumuamua was about 100 meters. Borisov was roughly one kilometer. Atlas seems to be five. That makes Atlas a thousand times more massive than Borisov and a million times more massive than our first visitor. We've only spotted three of these travelers. The odds of the third one being the largest by such a huge margin are astronomically low. Think of it like this. If you toss a coin, you expect a mix of heads and tails. What you don't expect is to get heads a million times in a row. That's the statistical nightmare we're facing with Atlas. Its size isn't just a detail, it is the central mystery. If interstellar space is filled with common debris, the smallest objects should be the most frequent. They are easier to catapult from their home systems and should exist in vast numbers. But Atlas shatters that expectation completely. Imagine the first two raindrops on your skin are normal and the third is a solid block of ice. Would you call that a normal weather pattern? Or would you question what kind of cloud could produce it? That's the question that wasn't asked. Some anomalies are simply too large to ignore. Ejecting a five kilometer object from a star system requires a titanic release of gravitational energy. Planetary scattering might manage it, but only in perfect, rare conditions. A binary star system could be responsible or a catastrophic planetary collision. In every case, the probability is vanishingly small. So, Atlas must originate from an exceptionally rare environment, be the product of an extreme cosmic disaster, or be formed by a process we haven't even conceived of. Instead of exploring these thrilling possibilities, NASA chose to bypass the topic. What we received was a gallery of indistinct images, a pixelated Soyo frame, a faint Mevan glow, a smeared high-rise cloud, a slanted tail from Punch, and a thermal signature from Spherex. While intriguing, none of these address the core, looming questions. None explain how something so immense found its way here. Another curious detail glossed over was its path. 3i Atlas arrived almost perfectly in the plane of our solar system, this alignment was what allowed so many probes. Hubble, Webb, Lucy, Myven, Punch, even rovers, to see it. But this convenient trajectory is highly improbable. Statistically, only one out of hundreds of interstellar objects would follow such a path. NASA framed this as fantastic luck, but the scientific response should be, why is this so rare, and why did it happen now? That wasn't discussed and ignoring a statistical outlier doesn't make it disappear. Every great scientific leap began with something that didn't fit. Mercury's orbit, the ultraviolet catastrophe, dark matter, all were puzzles that forced us to think bigger. When nature presents an anomaly, our job is to investigate, not to ignore it. True discovery begins where current understanding ends. And 3i Atlas is a treasure trove of anomalies, its gigantic size, its nickel, rich but iron, poor composition, its straight jets despite spinning, 
its improbable trajectory, and its unexpected outgassing far from the sun's heat. The size alone forces us to reconsider how interstellar objects are born. Combined, these mysteries become undeniable. I want to be clear, I don't believe NASA is actively concealing the truth. But NASA is a large bureaucracy. Bureaucracies favor safety. They shy away from uncertainty and statements that could spark public debate or scientific controversy. Admitting the true scale of Atlas means admitting our models might be wrong, and admitting that is uncomfortable. But that discomfort is the very engine of scientific progress. One of the strangest details is the chemistry. We see nickel, but a notable absence of iron. This is highly unusual. Nickel and iron are cosmic siblings, forged together in stars. In all the comets and asteroids we've studied, iron is more common. The only place you find high nickel material with little iron is in advanced, human-made alloys. I am not claiming Atlas is an artifact. I am stating that its combination of enormous mass, strange chemistry, rare flight path, and laser, like JET's demands we keep all possibilities on the table. NASA didn't link the nickel anomaly to the size anomaly, but they are connected. Observations indicate Atlas spins about once every 16 hours. With that rotation, its gas jets should wobble and spiral, but they don't. They remain perfectly straight and tightly focused, like beams from a nozzle. This isn't normal comet behavior. For a large, slowly turning nucleus to produce such narrow, stable jets is a paradox. It suggests either a nucleus of impossible rigidity or some form of internal, directional control we can't explain. Let me be direct, I am not arguing this object is artificial. I am arguing it is not understood. If it's natural, then the forces that created it are unlike any we have witnessed. It could be the remnant of a planetary collision, a shattered moon from a volatile, rich world, or a fragment from a disrupted ice giant. All these origins are rare, but the immense size compels us to consider them. The best is yet to come. On December 19th, Atlas makes its closest approach to Earth. That's when Hubble, James Webb, ground-based observatories, and amateurs worldwide will train their instruments on it. We might finally get a direct measurement of the nucleus. We could see the jets in stunning clarity. We might detect new volatiles or see signs of anisotropic heating. The data flood from this encounter will be monumental. We've already seen hints of faint, narrow streamers extending from the core, which some researchers suggest could be material, shed along a precise rotational axis, a feature that doesn't match the chaotic outgassing expected from an object of this magnitude. Furthermore, its light curve has sharp, periodic dips that a simple, round shape can't explain, hinting at a complex, multi-part structure. Whatever we discover, the anomaly of its scale will remain the central, unanswered question. To overlook the size is to risk overlooking the truth. In science, certainty is the enemy of discovery. 3i Atlas is not a danger. It is a cosmic messenger, a clue from a distant star. But for us to decode its message, we must be brave enough to ask the questions that were left unspoken, because its size isn't just a number. It's the key that could unlock a new understanding of cosmic evolution and our place in the galaxy. We must be ready for the possibility that our tiny sample of three interstellar objects is not random, but a sign that our neighborhood is traversed by visitors of extraordinary origin. The biggest obstacle to discovery isn't the unknown, it's the reluctance to confront it. If this journey into the unknown resonated with you, please support the channel by hitting the likey button and make sure you're following Astro Atlas for more deep dives into cosmic mysteries.